It is a privilege to be joined on the summit today by Jason Romano of Sports Spectrum. And Jason, I, I know you are a longtime producer. You've been a part of the sports world, sports broadcasting, sports media for a number of years. But uh, maybe there are folks who don't know who you are right off the bat or who what Sports Spectrum is. Let's start with Sports Spectrum. Tell us a little bit about the the magazine, the the website, the podcast, the the YouTube channel, all of that, and and uh, let us know a little bit about you. Yeah, so I work for Sports Spectrum. I'm the director of media. Uh, Sports Spectrum is a ministry focused on the intersection of sports and faith. It's also a media company. I like to call it a media ministry, um, but it's been around since 1985, a long time. Uh, what's that, 39 years this year? So next year will be 40 years uh, that Sports Spectrum has been around. Uh, and the goal was always to kind of keep Jesus, bring Jesus into the sports conversation uh, when it first came about. Back in 1985, it was called Sport Focus. Uh, it changed its name a couple times until we got to Sports Spectrum in the early 90s. And it's always been a magazine. I've heard people tell me in the 90s when they were growing up that they would get Sports Spectrum as the replacement to Sports Illustrated because the parents didn't want the kids to get the swimsuit issue. So Sports <laughs> Spectrum was what they got. And that kind of made me chuckle, just like you laughed there. But at the same time, it's kind of cool to know that we're doing work today and standing on the shoulders of many who did a lot of work in the 90s and in building this platform up. Uh, obviously, since the digital age, you know, a website is important and that's where all of our content can be found and certainly YouTube and social media. But the privilege that I have is I get to host our podcast, our Sports Spectrum podcast, and really talk to athletes and coaches and other people in the world of sports about Jesus and about Jesus in their life. And that's a it's not something I ever thought I'd be doing, but it's something that I'm incredibly honored to be able to do. And I know the team that works with me and that I work with them and, and certainly that are a part of Sports Spectrum feel the same honor and privilege that we get to talk to athletes and coaches and write stories and do interviews and edit content and post on social media about Jesus in the world of these athletes and coaches. So it's a real honor and a privilege. You asked about me. I, I come from a background of broadcasting and always wanted to be um, in broadcasting space. When I was a kid, I always wanted to be a pro athlete. And if that wasn't going to work, the next thing would to be was to be a, an on-air broadcaster. And funny as God sometimes is, um, that didn't take place till I was in my 40s. Uh, but for over 20 years, I was a producer for local radio, network radio, and then eventually television and social media. I worked for 17 years at ESPN. So I got to get my uh, get my experiences with the worldwide leader in sports and quite a few of them, but they were all behind the scenes. So it was really interesting when I made the pivot to go to Sports Spectrum. When my boss asked me if I wanted to, you know, host a show, I said, "This is something I've always wanted to do since college." But I kind of thought that that ship had passed. I didn't think that that was going to be possible. And now here we are, going on year seven. Uh, it'll be in the end of March. It'll be seven years since we launched Sports Spectrum and since I've been hosting the show. And it's been an absolute blast, Joey, an absolute blast. I, and I've seen your work, by the way. I, I really appreciate it. I, I like the tagline where sports and faith connect. And I think that's very much appropriate for, for what you do and, and what uh, the folks there at the organization do. And it, it's, I, I, I enjoy watching the videos. I enjoy watching the podcast. I think, and by the way, I think you're a natural at what you do. So right. uh, just from the perspective of having dealt with things from, I didn't play beyond high school. There's a real reason for that, but, <laughs> but I got, I had a chance to coach and I've had the chance to broadcast and, and I really feel like, you know, sometimes God we, has, has a plan. We just need to not get ahead of it. And uh, when we, we find ourselves there doing it at the right time, it all just comes into play. And it really looks like uh, that has been the case for you. Again, enjoying the videos. They're very encouraging as well. I really appreciate that. I, I'd like you to stay with something really quickly. Since we're mentioning this, I'm, I'm going to, to read this. True success is not defined by what you do, but by the impact you have and, and by who you were created to be. I heard you say that and, and have heard you say that. Talk mm. a little bit about that then in, in not only what you're doing, but in what we're talking about with sports and faith connecting. Yeah, true success. That's There's an evolution to that in my life because for many, many years, success for me was accomplishments, right? It's getting a job in local radio or actually go even further back. It's graduating from high school and graduating from college. Like those were big deals for me. I was not a great student. So for me to get an associate's degree, then a bachelor's degree, 
even to get a 3.0 GPA was a big deal for me in college because I was not a great student. And so that's success, right? And then you go on and you get your first job in broadcasting and that feels like success, even though I wasn't making hardly any money uh, and certainly needed other jobs to be able to even afford, you know, living on my own, but that was success. And then ultimately you get the job at ESPN and that's beyond my wildest dreams. And so that's successful in the eyes of other people and the world. And I climbed that corporate ladder the best I could at ESPN and really focused on that for the first decade of my journey at ESPN was how can I get to the next level, the next step, make more money, have the title, have the prestige. And I think a lot of people are focused on that. And I don't think it's inherently bad when you approach things like that. Certainly you want to do the best you can and you want to, you want to succeed and, and have accomplishments come your way. But it took a like I said, almost a decade or more for me to understand what true success was, right? And in my eyes, now that I've been a believer for over 20 years, walking with Jesus, learning about the life of Jesus, I'm focused now on true success, which to me is serving others, loving others, caring for others, being a great teammate, doing the work the best that you can, whatever that work is, that honors God as well. And not focused on climbing corporate ladders or, you know, being the, I mean, the last job I had at ESPN, I haven't talked a lot about this with anybody really, but the last job I had at, at ESPN, from the outside looking in, it looked like a very prestigious job. I was leading our social media for Mike and Mike in the Morning, which is a great show. Mike and Mike in the Morning was popular for years. and really enjoyed it. Yeah. And I got to work on a lot of cool uh, experiences with Mike and Mike and travel and do all these things. It's the most fun I ever had at ESPN was that last year working on Mike and Mike. However, the person that I replaced was 15 to 18 years younger than me. The job that he was doing was maybe two years out of college. And this is not a knock on him or me. This is just to let you know that at that point in my career, in taking that job with Mike and Mike, I could have easily, and I thought about this a lot, viewed that as a step down. Like, what are we doing here? I'm trying to climb the corporate ladder. Why would you go down to a job that basically a kid right out of college could do? And I was 41 at the time, 41 years old. But I did it for two reasons. Number one, I was not having the best time during my journey at ESPN. Uh, that This was a time when I was in transition and thinking, is this it? Is it time to leave? I'm not having a lot of fun, which was really the only time that I could ever say those words. But also the perception from my peers that, oh, Romano wants to be a producer, maybe a coordinating producer someday. Wait, he's taking this job? This is what he's doing? But I took it. And I got to tell you, it was the best decision I ever made because I wasn't focused on climbing in any, any kind of corporate ladder or being the next this or the next that, I just focused on trying to do the best job that I could and having fun and serving my teammates. And it's the best decision I ever made for in many reasons at ESPN for when I left, people thought this is this guy who worked on Mike and Mike and here we go. And I'm like, man, there was like 20 people working on Mike and Mike. I was just one of them, but it opened up a lot of doors post ESPN just because I said yes to working on that show, even though a lot of people don't realize it was a gigantic it's like a starting quarterback for years suddenly saying you know what i'm going to choose this job and i'm going to probably be a backup maybe even third string but i'm doing it not because i'm trying to become a starting quarterback again because i'm trying to just say yes to what god wants me to do right. and so i my view on success is much different now and it's about serving and loving others and being the best teammate you can and not just about the accomplishments if the accomplishments come like celebrate those if 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 you get a raise or you get a promotion, celebrate those. That's great. That's wonderful. But if that's where you're predicating your success on, I believe you're, you're mistaken. I believe you're putting it in the wrong place. We're here on the summit right now with an incredible privilege to get to visit with Jason Romano of Sports Spectrum. Uh, Jason, you do get a chance to visit now with, with so many, you were visiting with many sports personalities, if you will, athletes, coaches, executives, you name it. And now in this current iteration of what you're doing and, and where you're serving, you, you get the chance to do that again. Talk a little bit about that and, and what it means 
to get to visit with these athletes and, and coaches and, and again, sports figures from all aspects about their faith in Jesus and, and just getting, giving them an opportunity to share. Yeah. In many ways, it's the same from the time I was at ESPN, you know, it's building relationships and talking to people and, and um, showing interest in them and, and trying to highlight what they get to do. But in many ways, it's completely the opposite too, because now we get to invite an athlete on and ask them about the most important thing in their life that they never get asked anywhere else, their faith in Jesus. And so for me, it's an honor because I didn't know if we'd run out of people to talk to, Joey, if I'm being honest with you. I really thought when we started the podcast, I'm like, all right, maybe we'll go once a week and try to find a couple people here and there. And I started with all the people that I knew personally or, or tried to have a connection to and reach out to those people first. And then it just kept going. And God has provided and brought people who I, I never thought I'd talk to. Big names, people you would know, like Tony Dungy and others. But then the names of the smaller schools. Um, in many ways, in 2018, I talked to a coach named Greg Tonegal, who's the head basketball coach at Indiana Wesleyan. At that time, they were, and they still are, one of the powerhouse NAIA schools in men's basketball in the country. I didn't realize that talking to him in 2018 was going to lead to different connections that ultimately made my daughter choose to go to college there. Wow. So things were just happening, right? And so talking to athletes, I love talking to the big names. We're going to be going to the Super Bowl in a couple of weeks in, in Vegas and spending time talking to players from both teams and other people in the world of the NFL, Hall of Famers and others. But I, I'm also meeting new people like these coaches on these small levels in college or these high school coaches or broadcasters or different people, authors and speakers and pastors. I've met so many different people and the conversations that we have rooted around, you know, the gospel of Jesus and certainly how sports can play a role in that has just been incredible. So I, I've, it's now been seven years and I kind of see what God's been doing and he keeps doing. Um, we do three shows a week now on sports spectrums podcast, three new interviews and I keep thinking we're going to run out of people, Joey. I actually thought about this an hour ago. I'm like, all right, so in the next couple of weeks, who are we talking to here so we can run these interviews in a month or two? And every time I kind of go into lists and research and God provides. So it's a pretty cool thing what we get to do. And and he always provides. It's it's amazing to see him work. You know, by the way, you mentioned Coach Tonegal. We had him here on Midwest Sports Net uh, less than two months ago, and I actually had a chance to visit with Coach Motes, uh, the volleyball program there at Indiana Wesleyan uh, National yeah. Champ, baby National National Champ. Championship. Yeah, and so we had to visit with her and a couple of the players too, and give her an opportunity to share. And and she did right off the bat. I mean, it was it was fun to get to listen to her and her perspective on on the season, an undefeated season. I I. When, when I was a youth pastor and was for a long time, uh, I there are certain scriptures that, you know, just stuck with me and I, I enjoyed getting yeah. across and the kids would get with me. One of those was Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Even in my time as a pastor, I mean, you know, the congregation just say it with me because I, it's one of those scriptures I would say over and over again, what you're doing is giving, uh, not only opportunities from these, these sports figures, but yourself as well people a chance to hear the word yeah. and talk about the, what that means then from the perspective of where we're, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. We're hearing the word of God from different people, but people that we respect on the diamond and on the court and on the field, uh, the impact that something like that has. Yeah. I think when these athletes, we'll just say athletes for now. I mean, we talked about coach Tonegal and we've talked to many coaches as well, but we'll say athletes to start because I think they're the ones that have the most impact on especially young people's journeys as they, as they grow to idolize and, and cheer on these players. When you hear a player come on anywhere, much less our show, I mean, we just saw CJ Stroud from the Houston Texans. They win, you know, to go to the playoffs and CJ Stroud, is you know doing a post game interview the microphone's in his face and not only does he give glory to god which i think a lot of guys do but he starts talking about being a vessel for christ and he yeah. starts talking about being used by christ and there's an opportunity there to be a witness for the gospel that comes in different spectrum certainly our spectrum of sports with sports spectrum and being able to share that 
people, I don't know if they pay attention and listen, but hopefully they're they're that word hearing, you know, something goes on, I think. And I don't know if our audience and sports spectrum has a ton of non-Christian listeners. I would venture to say probably not. You know, our our Venn diagram in that middle portion are Christians who love sports, right? But somewhere on the outside of that Venn diagram are Christians who doesn't who don't really care about sports, certainly, which we've had a lot of. But on that other side, I think about those people and I wonder and hope, I haven't heard from many of them personally, but I've had some some people like in the business that I work with who've seen clips or whatever that will tell me they they appreciate what I'm doing, even if they don't agree or or believe the same things I believe. But I see there's an opportunity here, not just for a CJ Stroud to go on ESPN and have a mic put in his face and be able to talk about Jesus. I hope every athlete who proclaims a faith in Christ does that. And they should, because that is a secular audience with millions watching. But even for our show, I think there's a lot of Christians who view sports sometimes in a negative way, or all they see is what they see on ESPN. And it's like, wait, let me, let me show you a different side of this guy or gal. Let me ask questions that you might seem interested in and be surprised at this journey that these athletes are going on or coaches or whoever. So I think this is a great opportunity for all of us to ask more questions, to talk to more people and to hopefully hear the gospel proclaimed and, you know, hearing from the word of God, that, that scripture you referenced, it all does come back to the gospel. It comes back to God and his word. And uh, I, I tell you, we've had a couple people on specifically who've come on the show Jordan Kamachik is one of them. I think he was with Cleveland this year. He's a special teams guy who I would ask him questions and his answers would be scripture. Right. Not just your, <laughs> I hate to say it, not just your canned Christian answer, which sometimes I, I go to, but it was scripture. It was talking about being rooted in Christ. It was talking about seeking first the kingdom of God and all these other things being added. It was talking about living a life of purpose and passion. I mean, it was amazing. And that's, I just shake my head when I hear those conversations and think, man, if one person is hearing the Bible for the first time through an athlete's answer, mm -hmm. holy cow, like what an honor and a privilege. So I don't know, maybe I got too deep there for you, Joey, but it's, it's not at all. It's pretty cool. Not at all. And, and we appreciate that here. And I, I, I'm thankful that you're taking the time to, to share that you, you said three or four things that I'd love to just continue on in. Yeah and and take another three or four hours with you i won't or with our audience i i, I appreciate the, the midwest sports net audience for watching so we won't do that on this episode but jason i'd love to have you come back on again because I, we definitely could fill some more time and and share more a couple more questions then to to wrap that up and and taking from something you said then is that you know you're not running out you're not running out of people to say, Hey, listen, I, yeah, Jesus has done something in my life and this is my opportunity to share that. I, I'm, I'm seeing it. I, I'm enjoying every video that I see that, that you all do. And, and it is a blast. And I, and I enjoy, I'll, I'll put one in. I'm not watching YouTube. I'm listening to YouTube just to clarify while I'm driving to some of my sports broadcasts and, and, you know, good three or four hour drive, I can get two or three of your videos in and, and listen that way never disappointed. But I, I would ask then from that, are we seeing, I, I guess, is, is it because I, I'm, I'm seeing this more now, obviously, than I did when I was younger. I think we're about the same age. I, I think I'm a little bit older than you are. Just I'm to, 50. I just turned 50 a couple months ago. So. Okay. I, I, I turned 53 in three days. There you so go. Figured, figured we were pretty close. <laughs> and um, so we have similar perspectives, I'm sure, on, on sports and how we grew up and teams and the way things are done. Right. I'm seeing more athletes from outlets like yours and others that are sharing about the gospel and what Jesus is doing for them. I, I would ask you, is, is that the case? Are there just more outlets or is there more of the gospel that's going forward and we're just getting to see a little bit more of it? Or is it some combination thereof? Yeah, it's a great question. I think there's a combination of both. Like I, I knew I've only been a Christian for, you know, 20 years. So the first 28 years or 27 years of my life, uh, I was not a Christian. So if it was being said or talked about, I wasn't paying attention. So I guess I got to preface it by saying, I don't know, it, you know, before 2001, when I became a believer, but I will say 
even after becoming a believer, I didn't see a whole lot of guys sharing. I mean, there'd be a few, you know, Tim Tebow is the one that stands out back in 20 or 2006 or seven. He would wear the eye black and talk about Jesus. He'd be like, okay, that guy's pretty cool. I remember when David Tyree won the Super Bowl and even the year before when the Colts won the Super Bowl and you had two guys, you know, proclaiming Jesus on the biggest stage, right? And David Tyree, a Super Bowl hero, Tony Dungy, legendary coach of the Colts proclaiming Jesus, but there weren't many places. And I don't know, I think there is something to do with technology and certainly social media and being able to share on many more platforms and find these things uh, that people are saying and how they're living out their faith. But I also think there are a lot of really cool things going on in high school, in colleges, discipleship taking place, chaplains being really active. I, I see even in the professional level and the ministry I work with, we're working with pro athletes in a ministry called Pro Athletes Outreach. And, you know, they are very intentional about working with these athletes and discipling them and helping them be discipled, even if it's not through the ministry exactly, you know, or directly through them. It might be from different chaplains that are placed in networks that are connected to these ministries with athletes in action and fellowship of Christian athletes, like just really great things. And these ministries, by the way, have been around forever. Right. So it's not anything new in that realm, but I think we're starting to see it more. And I think there's a more intentional um, perspective that's taking place with these athletes, an intentional uh, way of discipling them that sure, when they get through college and come to the pros and even retire, you start to see a little bit more of a, of a, a boldness, I guess, with living out their faith. And so I think it's a combination of certainly the technology and the, and the place that, I mean, I've been seeing things on Instagram that have been posted on TikTok. I am not on TikTok, Joey. We're both in our fifties. I don't think we have any desire to join TikTok, but there's millions upon millions of people, young people who are there. And I'll see these videos that are posted and then shared over to Instagram where I am on. And I've, I'm thinking, okay, there might only get a 30 second clip here, but there's a lot of people posting about Jesus in the sports space. And that's cool to me. That's really cool. I've seen, I got to tell you a quick story. So last year at the Super Bowl, we had the opportunity to sit down with Brock Purdy, the, the Niners quarterback, and he had just lost the NFC championship game. And we were at his house of all places in Arizona doing an an interview and a sit down with him. And it was great. It was just wonderful. And we knew that it was going to be content that people would be interested in. And, you know, it's on camera, it's high quality, it's on our YouTube page. It's done quite well there, but I've seen clips of that interview on at least a dozen different random Instagram feeds that didn't even get it from sports spectrum because that's the world we live in. But obviously it's our clip because of the way that we did the interview at his right. house. And I love it. Like part, part of me back in the day would have been very protective and be like, come on, why don't you credit where you're getting this? And why are people stealing our content? Man, our content's about Jesus. You want to steal it and post it? Please <laughs> do. Just credit us if you'd like. I mean, I think that's proper protocol. But share this thing everywhere because if it gets a chance to for people to hear about the gospel, I'm all in. Like that, that's great. Let's go. And so I think it is a combination of more people being intentional about sharing the gospel, but also way more platforms than even 10 years ago that people are able to see these guys and gals talk about Jesus. That is incredible. By the way, I'm, I'm familiar with uh, what you're talking about. That was, that was a good interview. And, and I, I appreciated what I, I learned from that. And, and that's, that was brought Purdy in, in a, a role that I hadn't seen him before. So yeah. I, it, I learned a lot from that too. All right. Well, Jason, again, want to make good use of your time today. So let me ask you really quickly to let folks know not only uh, where they can find you, obviously lots of different outlets uh, are way to, to get, uh, to receive from your outlet, different venues, but uh, the, what you might see in 2024 from Sports Spectrum as we look ahead. Yeah, well, in the immediate future, um, we're going to the Super Bowl, which has been our, I guess this is our seventh season covering the Super Bowl. And when I say Super Bowl, I mean the week of the Super Bowl. We don't actually get to go to the game. Uh, I'd be curious to know if we actually could, if we applied for that, but we don't. We just go for the week. 
do a ton of interviews, talk to players from both teams, lots of great content. So that's in the immediate future. And we're excited, God willing, to go to Vegas. And I've never been to Las Vegas, so who the heck knows what that's going to be like going there. But we're excited to see who who Jesus is and what he'll do through sports spectrum, but certainly through these athletes that week at the Super Bowl. And I think, you know, people can find us at sportspectrum.com and I'll continue to say that for a while with our website. But our hope this year, we've talked about the idea of simplifying. Um, I don't know, that's been my word for the year in 2024. And certainly I think a, a vision of where sports spectrum can go and its simplification a little bit of just focusing on what on what we do best and not trying to create thousands of new things, but we are looking at one new thing. And hopefully that means uh, we're going to have a Sports Spectrum app in 2024 where all of our content can live. And that's what we're working on. We are in conversations right now about this. And the hope is, you know, by summertime, we have a Sports Spectrum app. And maybe the next time I'm on with you, Joey, we can talk about that because the idea of an app, I mean, listen, we're way behind the eight ball, if you want to be honest here, with the way phones work and the way people consume content. So to be able to put all of our videos, like you referenced, all of our podcasts, all of our stories and articles, our magazine, the opportunity to purchase the magazine, to maybe read stories behind a paywall, something, whatever that is, you know, certainly our devotionals as well. We all, if you can get that in one spot, instead of just going on a website, you can just go right on your phone and get the Sports Spectrum app. We think that's a, a really neat opportunity. So that's what we're really most excited about in 2024 is the, the hope that we're going to have a a redesigned website, certainly, but a, a redesigned and brand new app for Sports Spectrum. All right. Well, we, we'll be among those that helps you to push that right here Thank on you. Midwest Sports Net, without yes, question. Jason Romano, who is with Sports Spectrum, and and Jason, I just I can't say enough how appreciative I am for you taking the time to come on with me. Our first video of 2024 here, by the way, as, as we're getting the year started, and I believe that we're getting it started on uh, the right way in getting to, to talk about Jesus and sports. And again, Sports Spectrum, where sports and faith connect. So Jason, thank you again for being with us today. Success to you, safe trip to Vegas, and we look forward to getting to visit with you again. Sounds great. Thanks, Joey, for having me. Really appreciate it.